Hello and welcome to Beyond the Boundary. This is the 2015 season preview for the Carlton Football Club. My name's Nick Geisen. I'm joined by Josh Rickard and Vinay Lakshman as always. Now boys, the Carlton Football Club, they have lost some serious talent from this list. Absolutely, Nick. I mean, they've lost arguably their best player. Uh, well, their most important player, in yep. my opinion, in Jared Waite. Um, he just structured it up so beautifully when he played. Wasn't their best player, but um, in terms of structure... I think he was their most important player. They've really relied on him a lot in recent seasons. Absolutely. I'd agree. Uh, It hasn't been a pleasant off-season for Carlton. Uh, They haven't really gained anyone of note apart from the draft, where they did do quite well. But uh, I think they're going to be really having to play their rookies quite a lot this year because they're entering a phase where if they don't do that, then they're going to be in serious trouble in a few years because their good players like Kate Simpson and Andrew Walker aren't getting any younger. So, Yeah. 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 They've had two losses last year, which we sort of forget about, but they were 2014 losses in Nick, Nick Dargan and Heath Scotland. They left sort of earlier in the year, but both these players have been very important for Carlton over recent seasons. Well, Dargan uh, retired basically before the season began. Before the season's ever Because he, he couldn't, get, uh, couldn't get on the park with his knee injury. But you got to remember, he kicked four goals in that elimination final against Richmond in 2013 um, and played a pivotal role for them. So he's going to be a big loss. He's Scotland, played over 250 games, used the ball beautifully. Yep. Uh, he was a key key defender um, in that back half. Uh, the other ones you look at as well, Jeff Garlett um, didn't have his best year last year or the year before, but I think 2012 he kicked 50 goals plus. Yep. So he's got plenty of talent. Mitch Robinson, um, again, off-field issues and Carlton's had enough, which is fair enough, but still... Mitch cracked in, uh, wasn't the most skillful player, no. but he cracked in, won the hard ball, and got it out to those players who were the skillful. Yeah. Um, and then Brock McLean, who um, finished in their top three, best and fairest. Couple and of who years I ago. think is very stiff yeah. to have been what is delisted. Delisted, sure. yeah. So very stiff. Not sure why they did that. As, especially curious. the way it was handled as well. I mean, he was very told poorly. he was told he was going to get another year on his contract. Yep. And, and then, he was called up when he was on holiday and told, sorry mate, you're out. So and still hasn't got a call from Mick Moldhouse on why, so not good at all. No. Well this all these have sort of come to a head to the point where Carton are now left with not a lot of talent on this list. Well yeah, that's um that's my words. Yep. Um I honestly don't believe there's a lot of talent on that list. Uh a lot of Carlton fans might think I'm just saying Ooh. that because I'm an Essendon supporter, but not I'm honestly case. not. Not the case. You have a look at their list. I've identified only seven players who I think are capable of performing each and every week. Um, and Andrew Walker, he was injured for the better part of six weeks of last season. And he's not yeah, training um, at the moment? Not tra- well, he's well, not getting full training. Not yet. full training. Chris Yaron, um, inconsistent. Uh, his best is very, very good. Very good. Yep. If you can find that consistency... He'll, he'll jump into that but top But in recent bracket. seasons, we haven't seen that. Exactly right. Yep, yep. Lockie Henderson is another one. was fantastic last year. Uh, had a career best year. Yep. Uh, was very consistent, but it's one good year, so he's got to back it up again. And then there's obviously Mark Murphy, uh, Bryce Gibbs, Chris Judd, uh, probably in his last year of football. Big Great. question marks over Judd. His yep. best, as he says. Well, he, he says he's as fit as he's ever been at the moment. Correct. So we'll see how that comes up. And the other one's Kate Simpson. So. Yep. Other than that, I don't see a hell of a lot of talent. Uh, ready-made talent. They've got a, a, a lot of good young kids, yep. but ready-made talent to have an impact this year. So I yeah. agree. You know, Troy Menzel's a good one, but um, you know, he was good last year, I thought, but he didn't show so much to suggest that he's going to be a real weapon for them this year. You know, he was good for maybe a goal or two every game yep. here and there, but he's still got quite a bit of developing to do. Um, which I think he will. He'll d- definitely become a very good player. Yep. But um, as I mentioned, they've got to get more games into other youngsters as well because they may also take quite a while to become very yep. good players. Well, two yeah. players who will definitely see more games into in 2015, Patrick Cripps and Dylan Buckley, two of their better of the young talent there. Yeah, well, Dylan Buckley uh, played in their first couple of games last year. Uh, won a NAB Rising Star nomination, I believe. And Correct. He got injured and unfortunately didn't see much time again for the rest of the year. So yep. um, he'll play more senior football. Patrick Cripps I like as well. Um, he's been given a big role in the preseason, so I can see him uh, being regular in 2015. Even some of the draftees, I think, should see game time. Um, Blaine Bokhorst, pick 19. No one really had him there, but to me it makes perfect sense that he got taken that highly because he played a full year of waffle uh, for Swan Districts. He's yeah. built like a man, like an AFL footballer. And he wins a ton of ball. He was probably one of the best for Swan Districts. Averaged probably about 23, 24 disposals a game. Yep. And can kick goals as well. Dylan Viojo Rainbow. You love that. Oh, I really wanted to say his name. Yeah. I really wanted to say his name. 
He's another one that could debut early, Josh and Nick. Yep. So uh, keep an eye out for these uh, crazy little youngsters. Now, we mentioned Jared White leaving the club earlier. There's going to be a big gap up forward there. They brought in Liam Jones from the Western Bulldogs. What kind of impact yeah. do we see him having? And if he can't step up, who's going to step well, up? Well, I think the gap will widen now. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Liam Jones fan. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a unusual comment because Jones' form at the Western Bulldogs hasn't mm. been all that flash. Yep. So um, he, he has had games where he's shown his talent, but... He's at a new club now. A bit of pressure is going to be on him now with Jared Waite leaving. Uh, he's going to get games as well. A lot of people might uh, think I've forgotten Matthew Cruz in that seven players that I named. The only reason I didn't mention him is he hasn't played a game in close to two years. So yeah. um, it's going to take him a while to get back into the in uh, the rhythm of things. But um, yeah, Liam Jones, I'm not 100% sold on just yet. Okay. So what about Cruiser? Um, they're going to be relying on him a lot if he can stay fit. Henderson's another one. There's big injury question marks over him. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, Cruz is burning up the track, so to speak, but he's done that the last couple Every of years. Every player in the AFL is burning up the track. Yeah, this time he, of year. He's, he's done that the last couple of years and fallen over when the season's come about. So, okay. Literally um, or metaphorically? What do you mean? He literally fell over or are you talking about this? <laughs> well, well, probably not. He, he's, he's injured himself just before the season okay, began yes. or at the start of the year, yes. so... Um, I'll wait to make a judgment call on that uh, yeah. at the start of the year. So. And Henderson, who I just mentioned, um, there's a chance you could see him move down back even. I'd, I'd mm. like to see him move down back, um, and I'd like to see him swap with Andrew Walker. Okay. Uh, Andrew Walker, again, in 2012. He's similar to like a Jeff natural. Garland. Yeah. Kicked 50-plus goals down there. Uh, I think it was even 60. Okay. Um, He's a gun, Andrew Walker. Out and out gun. If he was at any other club, he'd probably get a lot more, you know, kind yeah, of absolutely. applause. So he's very good. I mean, if you if you throw down Casbol, uh, Liam Jones, Andrew Walker, and Troy Menzel at the feet, uh, you've got a very potent forward line. Oh, yeah. So yep. uh, I think it'd be better for Carlton for Walker to go down forward and Henderson down back. And then guys like, so the back line would then be sort of Jamison, and Henderson, maybe Sam Rowe down there. Sam well. Rowe, yep. yep. Uh, Zach Tui down there as well, uh, who's very good defensively. Uh, Kate Simpson, maybe not so good defensively, but more uh, on a good, wing, good, good on the attack. Back. Yeah, correct. Good on the attack um, and can play a 1% of role correct. Uh, if needed. So. so having said all that, what do we see for Carlton in 2015? What kind of performances are we expecting? And do we expect them to slide or improve a little? Well, I'll, I'll let my words at the end of the year if they do improve, but I can't see them finishing outside the top, uh, bottom six. Okay. So uh, I think it's going to be a very long year for the Blues. Um, as, as I said right from the top, I don't see a lot of talent on this list. But no? Yeah, I think um, I, I do see talent, but it's like, you know, Zach Tui, Samro, these are talented players, definitely, you know, I, I do rate them and I do think they're good players, but I, I think what Josh was more alluding to, and even Michael Jamison is a good defender, but there, there just isn't enough top range talent, like some real match winners is what yep. Josh was referring to, outside of Mark Murphy, Bryce Gibbs, Chris Judd is getting on in age. Kate Simpson, you don't see that many, you know, guys that if they don't play, there'll be a massive difference made to the team yeah. in that they won't be able to win. So having said that, I agree with Josh. I think their match winners are still young. I think their match winners are the guys like Patrick Cripps, Dylan Buckley and Troy Menzel, who need to get plenty more games into them before they can start churning out consistent performances. Yeah. So I think they're more a development team right now, Carlton. I'd probably agree with Josh and say they final seems a long shot this year um, but I think there's plenty of improvement to be made for those youngsters and that's all they should be aiming to do yep yep. well we've set the bar high for Carlton this year we'll get into the pass mark 9th to 12th is what we've agreed on um, they'll be disappointed if they are in that bottom 6 like you correct said. Yeah. but what, yeah. we're accept- what we're saying is we probably expect them to be there I agree with that yeah absolutely yeah. Um, that concludes our season preview for the Carlton Football Club hope you enjoyed it we'll see you next time